Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if, Issei lost his parents in early days part 1. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video. Go support and follow the Farcast for writing that awesome fanfic, and also make sure to comment on this story, link in the description. Let's start this video. Nothing. I do Issei could only feel nothing ever since the day his parents died by a serial murderer in his town when he was 6 years old. He could be angry or thinking how to avenge his parent he loves very much killed in front of him, but he somehow fought back and killed the serial murderer, ending the streaks with Issei's parents as his last victims. Ever since that, he has robbed all the emotion he actually had, simply gone or destroyed beyond repair. He didn't even cry during the funeral and cremation, because he already died inside, but never once he thought of following them. None of his relatives wanted to accept him because of his dirtied hands and emotionless behavior, but one, his youngest aunt from his mother's side, Shaiki Hisako, 22, fresh graduated from college, accepted him to live with her, with hope that she could help his nephew regain the feelings and cheerfulness he once had. So Issei came to live with his aunt in Kuo. But even for years, his symptom doesn't get better at all, making his aunt totally at loss. She knew Issei is a good child despite that he was expressionless, he does the chores around the apartment they live, making sure that her aunt felt comfortable when arriving home. But his aunt was sad that Issei never once smile or talking innocently like the olden days. Then years later, now Issei already 16 years old and attending Kuo Academy, a girl high school that recently become co-ed and accepting male students, because the school was the nearest from her aunt's apartment, despite that, the majority of the applicants are still girls. Issei's physique could be categorized good, he is tall around 173 centimeters, he has light brown colored hair and eyes, his body is quite toned as he always spending his time either studying or training, because he wanted to at least able to protect her aunt, who kindly gave him a home. At school, he never speak unless it was needed for him to open his mouth, he just do simple greeting for pleasantry purpose, and dazed outside of the window for most of his time in the class, irritating the teachers because he ignored them, but letting it go as he always solved the problem they gave to him, and decided to ignore him too. He naturally ignored his classmates too, and because of that, he doesn't have any friend. But, the girls start calling him the silent and aloof prince, many girls admired him, and the boys hated him for hogging the girls, but he couldn't care less as he cannot feel anything about it. On the day that his aunt will come home late, Issei usually gazed the sunset anywhere he can see it, and returned home when it is already dark. It was his routine ever since he moved to this town. Issei was doing his routine atop of the bridge, while a girl with different uniform walked to him and stopped few meters away. Ah no. The girl tried to call him, but it didn't register to his brain as he watched the sunset. Being ignored, the girl with long black hair and purple eyes, become angry and unintentionally releasing pheromone, which registered well, rather than sound to say. He finally turned toward the girl who immediately fixing her angry face to smile. Sorry, I don't know you are there, no one ever disturbed me before. He responded in a flat tone, the girl instantly become angry, but she could maintain her facial, but the same pheromone earlier released and Issei knew it and her smell telling him that she isn't human, and same goes with some people in the school, but they had different smells from her. Are you by chance, hi do say kun Yes. I saw you here sometimes seeing at the sunset, and I think I took a liking to you the girl confessed with shy expression. But Issei knew she's lying as she didn't release sweet pheromones like few girls among the ones who confessed to him. No, I never date someone before and I won't date you because you will be sad later. The girl became curious rather than angry, this is the first time she was rejected with reason that she will be sad. The girl real self is a wife fallen angel who usually given a mission to seduce sacred gear user, to join the fallen angel faction, or eliminate them if they are too troublesome. She would do the same pattern, date them to know what kind of personality they have, and decided what she will do about them. The time she rejected by her target was not few in number, but none of them rejected her with reason that she will be sad later. Why? She muttered, that was the only appropriate word she could muster. Because I'm incapable of loving you and make you happy, so you should choose a better guy, Issei answered with an honest response. The fallen angel was surprised to hear his answer, she's wondering what kind of past this boy had, and make her wanted to know more about this boy personally, instead of fulfilling her mission, though her mission allowed her to know more about the brunette. Then how about if we start as a friend? Yuma asked she was desperate to make a connection with Issei. He could smell the desperation from her, so he decided to play along with it. Sure, if you able to put up with my personality and you know me, but I don't know you. He answered with a flat tone. I'm Amano Yuma call me Yuma, nice to meet you Issei Kun. Yuma happily introduced her human name. Issei knew she lying again, but shrugged it off as he'd need a name to identify her. Likewise. He replied short. Issei returned his sight to the sunset, and Yuma moved closer to him, and turned to watch the sunset beside Issei. Why do you like watching the sunset, Issei-kun? No real reason. 
Two of them only watching the sunset in silence until the sunset, it was the first time that someone watched the sunset together with him, even if the one accompanying him had an ulterior motive. A single thought entered Issei's mind, maybe this not human beside him could help him to regain his feelings, and he's willing to make a bet on it. The sun already set, it would be dangerous if you go home alone, Amano-san. Then escort me home. She demanded while smiling. Issei nodded as it is already his intention from the beginning, even though he knew that the girl in front of him isn't human and possibly doesn't have a resident here, it just courtesy he showed to her. Thank you for accompanying me home Issei-kun, just this far is enough, my dad will be angry if he knew I bring a boy home. Yuma lied, she had no father or mother left in this world, she was abandoned in this world alone, until the leader of Grigori, Azazel found her and brought her to Grigori. Issei knew it was a lie, but decided to not pay it a mind, alright. See you tomorrow Issei-kun. She waved to Issei before she ran toward the direction of the residence. Issei turned his body toward his home. Are you sure about this partner? A voice with worried tones suddenly asked inside his head. It was his companion ever since the day his parents died, a dragon that lives inside his sacred gear that awoken by his will to live and rage when the young brunette was dying from a stab to his heart. He offered the young Issei to become a dragon, and he accepted it right away, but something happened because he forced the dragonification process to the dying child. The price young Issei paid was not just his humanity, but also his feelings, something that allowed him to embrace what left of his humanity. Though Dragon was prideful being, but he is certainly apologetic one, he cannot stand that he robbed the child's feelings. He knew that the Issei tried to regain what is lost, but trying to use uncertain individual to regain it is worrying him because he cannot bear that his host even more broken. Don't worry Drag. I'll be fine. Issei replied in his mind as he walked toward his home. Sacred gear items with power that only exist in imagination, God created so humans could defend themselves from the supernatural threat. Among them, there are 13 items that could potentially kill God himself. One of them is called Boosted Gear, sacred gear that could double someone's strength almost endlessly. Inside the Boosted Gear lives a soul of a dragon, dragon named Drag, the heavenly dragon of dominance. A long time ago, Drag and his rival, the heavenly dragon of innocence, Albion fought to see who's stronger between them, before finally battling near three factions battlefield. The three factions made a truce to eliminate these two dragons, before restarting their war again. God, the leader of the angels, pulled their soul out of their body and put them into the creation he made, the sacred gear. The young Issei, the host of boosted gear, almost died after the serial killer stabbed him in his heart, he never fell into despair when he already in front of death door, instead, he was filled with a will to live, and that awoken Drake from his slumber. Seeing his host already in critical condition, he offered the young Issei the chance to live with the price of his humanity and become a dragon. Without hesitation, the child accepted it right away, he offered his heart to the dragon. But something else happened, not only humanity he had to pay, but also his emotions. His emotions continuously crumbled, but he's still able to maintain one emotion before it finally crumbled. Rage. Soon after young Issei become a dragon, he pulled the knife from his heart and clad himself in red armor. The serial killer was freaked and tried to run away, but failed as Issei quickly the knife into serial killer's heart. After that, he felt nothing not even when he saw the body of his parents, simply nothing he couldn't cry anymore because he already felt nothing about them. He called the police with no emotion because that was the most logical action come to his mind. Issei was declared innocent as it is an act of self-defense and because of he's still underage. Because of his dragonification, Issei's nose become much more sensitive, with his nose he could distinguish what someone thinks by the pheromones they released, and of course, he could distinguish between human and not human. Drake explained to him the basic knowledge of the supernatural world. After the funeral and cremation, his relatives discussed about how they will deal about Issei, they all almost agreed to send him to rehabilitation center, but Hisako, youngest of his mother's siblings, declared that she will take Issei in because she thought it would be better if Issei healed normally, living among children his age. And just as an adult they are, they thought it was too troublesome to take him in, considering that Issei capable of killing someone and without a care as he now is emotionless, and pushed it all to Hisako. He of course quickly branded as a gloomy kid when he first moving and bullied, but he paid no mind and care making the bullies crept out and stopped by themselves. Then he met with Shidu Arena, a tomboyish energetic girl, who lives right beside the apartment where Issei lives. Arena always asked Issei to join her game, and he silently followed her, rather than a friend, most of the people saw them as master and her butler. Isako was happy when Issei would play with Arena, but when the shyness had to move to England, she was the one who crying. And arriving at the present, Issei hasn't changed at all, still emotionless. The morning after he made new friend, Yuma is waiting for him in front his apartment, it's something odd, normally Issei won't care about it, but now he concerned a little about if she did something to his aunt, he expand his sensor, but find nothing weird around his apartment, they exchange simple greetings before they walk together. 
Isako left little later than Issei after she locks the door, she accidentally saw Issei walking together with a girl with different school uniform. She scowled when she saw that, she thought that Issei finally hit a girl, but didn't her about it, though her mood quickly changed to happy, as now she found interrogation topic for later. During their walk together, Issei could feel that they are being followed. Ever since he entered second years, he was constantly being followed by four people from two different groups, as they never come closer together when spying him together. He knew their identity, mostly because of their smells passing each other in the hallway in the school. They were Taoju Kaneko from class 1 to 2, Yudo Kiba from class 2 to 3, they were grouped in the group 1, as they rarely together following him. Kusaka Ria from class 2 to 4 and Nomura Aruko from class 1 to 4, they were grouped in group 2. Kusaka Ria and Nomura Aruko were the student council officers in his school, in fact, everyone from student council has the same smell. Drake explained that they are devils, while the one beside him is a fallen angel. Drake told him that they probably had the same objective, the sacred gear and he always warned Issei to be careful. On their way walking together to school, Yuuma was forced to initiate the topic as Issei just keeps silent, and even that Issei just answered as he needs, making her little displeased, she was very curious about his past, but being pushy might make him uncomfortable and failing her mission altogether. On the way, some Kuo students saw them walking together, they are surprised that Issei walking together with someone from another school. That's Issei-sama. One of his fangirls screamed. Who's the bitch beside him? Another fangirl shouted and without a doubt entered Yuuma's ear. Yuma's lips and brows twitched dangerously, but she maintained his smile in front of Issei, but Issei knew she's very angry being called a bitch. I normal fag. Yuma giggled when she heard that the boys. You are popular, Issei cunt she said. I thought a girl would be angry if someone called her a bitch. Issei said flatly. Yuma laughed at his words, making more glares toward her and Issei. You are too blunt you know that they just jealous because they thought I'm your girlfriend. Honestly I don't care much since I can't feel anything, but from everyone who confessed to me, only you want to stay as my friend, Amano-san. Issei said. Why you can't feel anything Issei-kun? She asked she is very curious about it because this is the first time she had a target that emotionless. Issei looks up toward the sky and snorted, it's already a distant past. He said, leaving Yuuma a bit displeased that the brunette didn't answer it. This is where we part ways Issei-kun, later want to meet here after school. Yuuma asked as they arrive at the junction that where their path split. Sure. Issei answered short. See you later, Issei Kun. Yuuma waved at him as she walked away. After seeing Yuuma left, Issei moves his body towards school. He attended the class as usual without much disturbance except the pervert duo's tantrum, but he just ignored them as usual. After school, before he left, a tall girl with blue hair come to him. Excuse me, hi do Issei Kun. The girl said. Yes. He asked, he raised his head to face the one who called him, and he recognizes her as Yuri Tsubasa, Kuo Academy Student Council General Affairs. Can you spare some time to the student council office? She asked, he knew none of the student council members as human, the girl in front of him also not an exception. The class which still bustling with his classmate became crowded as the student council officer came to pick Issei up. He didn't want to go honestly, being called to their den, but he doesn't want them to be trouble later on, so he decided to accept the invitation. Okay. He answered as he put the last book from his desk drawer to his bag. He then followed the student council general affairs to the student council office. She knocked the door three times before she opens it. Aichu, I brought him here. Thank you Tsubasa. Issei entered the room, he glanced toward two specific individuals there, the ones who constantly following him before turned toward the student council president who already sits on a cross of empty sofa. She is Shatori Sauna, intellect type looking individual with a cool demeanor, her hair is black colored, styled in bob cut, and pink glasses ornamented her beautiful face, as if protecting her glinting amethyst colored eyes. Her real identity is Sona Citri, the sole heiress of Citri family of devil, after her sister took the leviathan name. Please sit here, Haidu Kun. She instructed she pointed at the empty sofa in front of her. Issei did as she instructed, at least there's no hostile smell inside the room yet. D. She asked as she raised a teapot prepared on top of the table. No thanks. Issei answered he doesn't want to be poisoned or anything, while well inside unknown territory like this. The student council president put the teapot back the table, unconsciously releasing sad smell from her, something that Issei cannot understand. So, what you call me here for Shitori Kaichu I believe I don't do anything weird this past week. Issei asked. He knew he did nothing wrong, unlike his classmates that called pervert duo, that caught bringing porn to school on almost every inspection. Lately outside of the school, you came contact with a girl from another school right? Not lately, but yesterday. Issei corrected her. Stay away from her. She would only bring trouble to you. Sauna said bluntly. Issei understands why she wanted him to stay away from his friend, fallen angel, and devil relationship is not very good. But he did not care in slightest about it. 
Is she your acquaintance? She's not. Then I won't follow your advice, she's a friend. Issei replied her, and before Sauna could say anything else, he stood up from the sofa, looks like there's no more talk can be done, thank you for your advice I suppose, excuse me. He walks toward the exit, while Sound is searching a way to stop him from leaving, but she cannot find any, when he reached the door, she shouted. You will be killed by her. Issei stopped at his track, the other student council officers were surprised hearing Sauna shouted, she never raised her voice except she was angry, but today she did it out of desperation, to stop a boy no less. Thank you for your concern, Shitori Kaichu, if she can take it, I will gladly give it to her died in friend's hand might not be so bad. Issei said without looking back but loud enough for everyone to hear. The student council president is really sad when she heard him that he could throw his life that easily. Do you not value your own life? She asked, her voice was low, but with Issei's enhanced hearing he could hear it. I don't have something called life anymore. So don't waste your energy to worry on a zombie. Issei answered her question. Zombie? Sauna muttered, she was ready to cry anytime, she cannot imagine what happened to the once cheerful boy in the past to become like that. Just with a difference, I'm still an omnivore, excuse me. Be left for real this time. What we should we do about him Kaichu? He could be very dangerous. The vice student council, Shinra Tsubaki asked, she deducted earlier that Issei was serious about calling the fallen angel and disguise his friend. Sauna cannot answer directly, she takes a deep breath to calm herself and sorted her feeling before she answered. His condition is very abnormal, I think we should stop watching him any longer, he glanced specifically at Ria and Raruko earlier, as if saying he knew that they followed him. Sona answered. They widened their eyes in surprise, especially Ria and Raruko who made sure that he didn't know but get caught nonetheless. Most likely he already awakened his sacred gear and stronger than we thought. Sauna deducted, she's sure that he will be fine, his emotionless confidence said if she can take it saying that the fallen angel is weaker than him and he already knows everything about her and them being not human. Then he just plays along with the fallen angel. Ria asked. I don't know his objective by doing that, but as long he didn't make ruckus let him. Sona declared, they couldn't believe that Sona letting go a potential danger without surveillance. Akaichu what if Tsubaki tried to argue but cut before she could finish it. Let's drop it Tsubaki, we cannot do anything about him right now, I would rather not endanger Ria and Raruko or anyone else by commanded them to follow him. Sona said, none really argued about it anymore, Sona thought about their safety first after all. Sona clapped her hands twice to get everyone's attention, let's return to work everyone. She said. Yes Kaichu. Everyone answered and started moving to do their respective duty, while Sona sunk herself deeper in the sofa, she took out a round pendant with rectangular aquamarine colored gem on top of it. It is a pendant Sona always wear ever since 10 years ago, right after she met with her first love. Zombie what's really happened to you ice kun? Sona muttered as she gripped the pendant close to her chest. Issei kun. Yuma called as spotted Issei while waving at him. Issei smelled confusion from her, her struggle from one another in her mind, something that quite common smell for him during the tests. Did I make you wait? Sorry. Issei said, he planned to come early but was distracted by the student council before. No, I just arrive here. She said while keeping smile front in front of him. Shall we go? Issei nodded and walked alongside her. Ni, Issei kun, do you free this Sunday? Yes, I'm free. How about if we hang out? Sure. Uma smiled and looked happy, but the sad smell comes from her become stronger. Let's exchange number, that way we can decide where to meet. Issei took out his phone and sent his contact details to Uma's, they bid farewell since they gone to the different direction. They arrived at home and quickly interrogated by his aunt about Uma. After they hang out, the sun almost set, and they stop by a park to rest on the bench before going home. Thank you for today Issei-kun. I'm glad if you had fun Amano-san. Yeah. But that's a lie right? Uma was surprised as Issei said that, there's no way that she showed it out in front of him earlier, or it was eyes of the emotionless to spot her anxiety that easily, she thought. You were confused all day today. Issei continued, you are right I'm confused. Uma was confused. She had to choose between doing her mission and her feelings. The interest she had in Issei already changed, the time she spent to directly made contact with him change it, though short, it is enough to change it from curious to care and care to like. You can tell me if you want. I'm sure that you will hate me if I tell you. Yuma laughed while saying that. It is the same as love, Amano-san, I cannot hate you. Issei said in a flat tone, Yuma stopped her laugh and gritted her teeth. Really? Even if I told you that I'm not human? She asked half angry. Even if I told you that I'm here to kill you? But Issei without changing his expression said, yes. The last barrier that holds her tears broken, the tears flow from its dam. Any human would show fear to that kind of threat, yet he didn't phased even one bit. But you right now are confused whether to kill me or not. Yes, now let's hear your story, maybe introduction first. Issei said as he offered a handkerchief to Yuma. 
She took the handkerchief and used it to erase her tears. My real name is Rainer, I'm Fallen Angel. She muttered the last part, and a pair of black wings sprouted from her back. I was sent here on a mission to observe you at first, but after I get to know you, my boss changed his order to kill you. She said with a hoarse voice, her tears continue to flow, she doesn't want to be hated by the boy in front of her, after showing her true self, the filthy crow. Don't worry about that, I'm not angry or anything, even if I cannot feel it, it is more because I know you from the start that you aren't human, and someone warned me that you will kill me or something. Rainer cannot hide her surprise. She was already got caught from the start. You knew. Issei nodded. I guess you will be the first one I tell about this. Issei said as he raised his right hand. He flexed his hand, and it starts changing color to red, become bulkier, and his nails grew into claws, his eyes color change from brown to green. He only transforms partially as it is enough to show it to Rainer, because if he changes full form, he will look like small drag, and it is troublesome if anyone saw him. I'm no longer a human. Issei said flatly. You sacrificed your body to your dragon. Rainer asked she astonished that she found that Issei is no longer a human. Issei cancelled his transformation while Rainer folded her wings in. Issei told her everything about his past, this is the first time he could tell someone without hiding anything, because he never found a person that can be trusted to the truth he buried inside his heart. So that's why Rainer muttered, she now knew why Issei cannot express himself, he almost died, but miraculously awakened Drake, and had his body changed into a dragon to survive, but something happened and his emotion lost in the process. Thank you Issei-kun for sharing your past with me, and thank you for telling the truth about you too, Rainer-san. Her face become red, she doesn't deserve any thanks, but maybe because he's emotionless, his words sound sincere to her. She cannot hold herself back anymore, she admits that she is completely fallen to this boy named Haidu Issei. Issei-kun, would you hear my request? What is it? Rainer moved closer to Issei and kissed him, Issei was taken aback, but he just let the fallen angel do it. She removed her lips from his and stared at his empty eyes, before continuing what she just do for the second time for a few minutes. I'm sorry Rainer-san, I can before Issei could finish his sentences, Rainer put her index finger in front of Issei's lips, that wet with her saliva. SSTT you don't need to say that you cannot return my love or anything I'm fine with one-sided love for now. Rainer confessed, she vowed to herself that she will do anything to fix Issei, but who knows what will happen to her if the higher-ups learn about her failure. Thank you for the great day today Issei-kun, be careful of the devils, you never know what they will do to obtain your sacred gear. Rainer said as she stood up from the bench, she warned Issei to be careful since he lives in their den after all. The devil warned me about you will kill me, though. Issei said. Is her hair red? Rainer asked. Issei shook his head, no, her hair is black. He said. Be careful with the one with red hair. Rainer warned. Ria's Gremory. Issei tried to confirm the identity of the devil he should look out to. Yes, see how bold she is to come to human world without changing her name. Rainer confirmed. Thanks for your advice, Rainer san. Issei smiled a little, but he himself didn't notice it. Here's that one stop flowed once again from Rainer's eyes. She saw him smile a little, he never even bothered to put fake smile, but now he is smiling at her. His smile is a sign that he still could recover, that he still had it inside him. That was Rainer thought when she saw it. Rainer had doubt that Azazel would order assassination to Issei, except someone, altered the report, or someone else was issued the order in his name, she knew that his boss liked to study sacred gears, he would be a fool to miss the chance to study boosted gear. That's why she determined to contact Azazel directly, and if Azazel really ordered it, she will defect from Grigori to be with the Dragonoid, or at least warn him to be careful if she cannot make it. See you later Issei-kun, I remember that I have to do something else, loving you is the most wonderful thing I ever feel. I will cherish the time we spent together. Rainer bid farewell with sad tone before she gone using a magic circle. Issei could smell sad mixed with happy and determination. He just hoped that Rainer will be okay. Though I would recommend that you see yourself in the mirror right now, I'm worried about that fallen angel, Issei. Drake's voice suddenly popped inside his head. What do you mean Drake? Issei asked as he heard Drake worried about the fallen angel. That girl was determined to risk her life for you. Drake replied. Somewhere within Kuo City. Angered that she doesn't get called by the flyer at designated time, she slammed her fist on the table. Useless. Those dirty crows can't do their job properly. Someone with red hair shouted in anger, apparently her plan to get a say after he killed by fallen angel ended in failure. Maybe tonight is not your luck Rias. Someone who sat in front of the woman identified as Rias, said before sipping her tea. She appeared calm and neutral, but the truth is that she very disgusted with what her friend did to gain the boosted gear, she planned to make it appear that she saved him from dead. It is a good way to earn a quick loyalty, but it doesn't go well with her. Usually, she doesn't care about this one, Issei was the target. Rhea sneered toward the comment her friend said, you must be happy now that you had the chance to obtain him too, Sona. 
Rhea said with full of poison in her tone, she thought that her friend is happy that she failed, so the black-haired king could hog a safe for herself. Not far from the truth but she'd wrong about it, Sona is happy not because she had an opportunity to obtain a say, but he avoided being enslaved by Rhea's, only to be used and thrown away when he doesn't have value anymore in her eyes. Sona knew that each person in Rhea's peerage's history. Imajima Akeno, Rhea's queen, half-fallen angel whom she found after the half's mother slaughtered by her own family. Aoju Kaneko, Kat Yakai who lived with her sister, her sister was battle prowess, was noticed by a high-class devil, and reincarnated her as devil. But she was abandoned by her sister who now became SS-class criminal after she killed her own king. Dibuyudo, a survivor of Excalibur Project, he ran away from the facility he in because he was executed and almost dead before Rhea's found him. And the last, Gaspar Vladi, Damper whom she found almost dead running away from his assailants. Sona found it quite weird, does such coincidence exist? The answer was no. Demon Lord Serzich Lucifer, formerly Serzich Gremory, pulled strings to manipulate them so her sister could get the strong members out there. All for his sister so she could have enough power to oppose her fiancé, Razor Phoenix in raiding game so she can dissolve her engagement. And now Rhea's targeted Issei, the host of Boosted Gear. A Longinus class sacred gear that can defeat God himself. Who doesn't want to embrace such power? Even Sona would be lying if she doesn't want that, moreover that Issei is her first love. Sona herself only met Issei once, simply because there's no another chance given so they could meet, but she treasured her feelings to Issei and finally found him again. She asked Rhea and Raruko to follow him under the pretext that he had sacred gear, but the truth was she wanted to protect him from Rhea's and any other threat. A few days ago, Sona was happy and sad, happy that Issei with his confidence could protect himself from any threat which he proved just now, but sad because Issei didn't remember her, given that she could recognize him at the first glance. Well he could be a good addition to my peerage, but he's not on my priority list since I had long abandoned my engagement. Sona countered. She also had the same problem with Rhea's, but she'd able to step outside of it with her own strength, her fiancé was proud devil, but he was kind to Sona despite their strength difference, his appearance cannot be called bad, handsome even, but Sona chose to break it anyway, she did it all while gripping the promise she made with Issei. Promise that's still very dear to her even now. You only did it last year. Rhea's retorted. So? What important I'm doing it first. Rhea's couldn't deny it because it already happened, her face red from anger, but even she wanted to attack Son right now, it wouldn't bring any improvement to her situation. She should rethink her plan to obtain a say before Sona does. Thank you for the tea Akeno, it is delicious as always. Thank you for your compliment Kaiju. Akeno said with a smile. I had something to do if you excuse me Rhea's. Sona said before disappeared by the magic circle. Sona, that bitch. Just you see I will get the boosted gear for myself. The next day, Rainer was not there to wait for him anymore. Issei was worried because what Drake said to him last night. He couldn't do anything if Rainer is not contacting him, and he focused on knowing more about the red-haired devil Rhea's Gremory. Issei know nothing about her at all except she's a devil, and Rainer warned him to be careful to her. But for that, he only had a choice to go to Shatori Sauna. In other words, he needs to go to their den once again, but something inside Issei said that he can trust Sauna. That was the first time he had a gut like that ever since he lost everything. He arrived at school while well, the boys saying that he already dumped by Rainer, well nothing between them from the start, so Issei just ignored them as always. Issei sat on his desk and hoped that day ended quickly. Around the same time, somewhere under the church. The woman got thrown into the cell with her body full of bruises and cuts almost in every part of her body, she was tortured all night long because she failed to do her work. Two of her friends could not do anything because they lost in number, but now that the men already were gone, they gave treatment to the tortured girl. One of them is tall and her body is curvy and got two melons hanging around her chest area, while the other looks like elementary kids with gothic lolita dress and blonde hair. The taller one called Kalawiner while the shorter one called Middled. Why you just don't do your job Rainer? The taller woman asked. If I did that, I wouldn't be here. Rainer answered weakly as she stood the pain. It made both of them curious why she won't be here if she did that. What do you mean? Middle tasked while healing Rainer's wound. He's stronger than me, not to mention Azazel Sama never issued the order to kill him, it would be very weird if he really did. Rainer explained. Now that you mention it, Azazel Sama likes sacred gear more than women. Middle agreed with her, Azazel, the leader of Fallen Angel is famous as a womanizer, but he could easily put them aside when sacred gear involved. How do you know that Rainer? Kalwerner asked to clarify Rainer's statement. I contacted him yesterday before Donacy captured me. Rainer answered. If I cannot make it alive, could you protect Issei Kun in my stead? He's suffering without him ever realized it. Rainer asked, the truth is she already at her limit, but she doesn't want to bother Issei, and she doesn't know how strong Issei is, given that he was transformed into a dragon he must be stronger, but she doesn't know how much stronger. 
Why you dedicated yourself to human you just met Raynor. You love him didn't you? Middle teased, red hue appeared on Raynor's cheeks, making Middle giggled, and Cal Raynor sighed. Maybe you two better get out before they started suspicious to you too. Raynor answered. I will contact Azazel Sama to send reinforcement, don't you dare to die Raynor. Um. Seeing her best friends finally left her alone, she took the chance to sleep before her torturers decided to do it to her again, as right now she only can endure. The last period bell finally rang and marked the day to end, Issei immediately stuffed his books to his bag and left the classroom immediately with destination to the student council office, the den of devils. Late even one second he would receive guest before he could make way to his destination. The one titled The Handsome Prince, asked by the Gremory to escort Issei, she planned to recruit Issei directly, but alas, he was too late as Issei already gone from his class. Issei knocked the door after he arrived at the front of the office. The girl opened it, she was the youngest of all, the only one who's still a first year. She tied her hair in ponytail style and always wore a pair of striped knee sock. She was terrified that Issei suddenly drops by again. The hello hi do senpai is there anything you need with student council? She nervously asked because she was stared with blank eyes. Is Shitori Kaichu in? I need to ask few questions to her. Baruko, let him in. Yes Kaichu. Excuse me. Issei entered the room, the wary smell is very obvious in there, given everyone released the same pheromone, because there's a good chance that he joined the fallen angel. He sat in front of Sona again. So, what brings you here Haidu Kun? Sona asked. Amano Sen said I should be careful of devils in this school, especially red-haired devil named Rias Gremory, I want to know more about her, given that you and everyone here also a devil. Instantly the room mood became menace, the devils accept their king releasing hostile smell. Issei raised his alertness a little because there's a chance that he will be attacked. Calm down everyone. Sona with calm demeanor calming her peerage that agitated earlier. So, hi Dukun, you already know that we are devils, from who you learn it, from fallen angel you went to date on yesterday or your dragon. Sona asked after she thought that her peerage already calmed enough. My dragon and yesterday we just hang out, not a date since she's not my girlfriend. Issei immediately answered. The fact that Issei bluntly denied that Raynor was not his girlfriend made Sona a bit happy. Then you already knew that I'm devil since the entrance ceremony. Yes. So what do you want to ask? Sona asked. Issei took out a piece of paper from his bag. It was summoning flyer he got when he waited for Yuuma to arrive, this flyer is reek of Gremory demonic energy, what does she want with me? He asked. That is summoning flyer, we distribute it so we can easily make a contract with humans, but in your case, if you almost died yesterday and it will synchronize with your feeling that you don't want to die and summon her, so she can reincarnate you as her servant. Sona explained truthfully. I see, so this had no use to me. Issei ripped it into shred without hesitation and threw it to trash. The student council officers were dumbfounded when Issei did that, even Sona couldn't help to open her eyes a little wider. Then I ask something, though it might be a little rude. What is it? What's the reason that you didn't do the same as Gremory? His boosted gear had no worth to you? Issei asked, it was a harsh accusation, but he wanted to know how deep he can trust Sauna. But what he was done has he incited hostility from the devils except for Sona, though he smelled angry and sadness from her. Watch your mouth Haidu Kun. Tsubaki shouted in anger, she doesn't like it when someone who doesn't know anything about her king to accuse something like that. Sona never did something like that, she always negotiated with anyone she wanted to be her peerage member, none was forced to join. No need to be angry Tsubaki. Sona said to calm her queen. She glanced toward her saying that Tsubaki should just leave it to her. Her peerage members don't understand why she sounded so lenient towards someone this rude. Rather than a forceful method to make them owe you, I'd rather do it through negotiation with them. You might gain short-time loyalty, but what I want is long-term trust with my peerage, Tsubaki, and everyone is angry because none of them was forced to join me, and I don't plan to do it. About boosted gear had no worth to me it would be a lie if I said yes. Sona explained without lying to him. And Issei knew that she not lying at all, but the sad smell from her never reduced as she constantly releasing it, it was something that's still mysterious to Issei, but he reluctant to ask. I see. I'm sorry if I offend you and everyone here. Issei bowed toward Sona, though his tone sounded that he not reflecting his action at all. Sona and her peerage astonished that Issei quickly change. No, no, rather than offended I think that you just offered yourself to me. Sona smiled at him. No, I just want to know what kind person you are Shitori Kaichu, and you are a trustable person for me. Issei said in a flat tone as always, but it is enough to made Sona's heart flutter, she is happy that at least Issei trust her. You don't like the idea of becoming a devil, Haidu-senpai? Haruko asked. 
The youngest member of Sona's peerage is harboring feelings toward the humanoid dragon. At first she thought it would be a boring task to follow a senior through his day, which turned to be a boring task. He never went anywhere, except when he do grocery run to supermarket and watching sunset anywhere he can see them. But Ruruko was captivated by Issei who watched the sunset in the west. She hoped that Issei would join, so she had a chance to spend time together with him, not only watching him from afar anymore. Rather than don't like it was more that I don't want to change anymore. Issei answered. Almost everyone thought that he wanted to preserve his humanity, but the black-haired king thinking differently, the word anymore changed everything. She'd now sure that Issei no longer a human but a dragon. He gave his body to the dragon inside his sacred gear. Is that so then I will respect your decline to my offer and will not ask you to be my peerage anymore, but if someday you change your mind in mere time, the door to this room is always open for you. Sona said with smile, but the sad smell became stronger, she already in verge of tears because she imagined what kind of incident happened, that Issei sacrifices his body for it and became expressionless like this. Thank you Shitori Kaichu. Issei answered. I guess I can only give advice to you, beware of Ria's Gremory, Himejima Ikeno, Kibayudo and Taoju Kaneko. That's all I can help you right now. I think I will heed your advice this time, Kaichu, but is it okay that you leaked about your fellow devils? Issei asked. Like you had your own reason that you don't want to change to devil, I had my own reason to do that. Sona answered. I see, I already entreating her for too long, I will excuse myself now. Issei said as he stood up from the sofa. Wait hi do kun. Sona said as she also stood up. Yes. Sona removed the pendant she always wears and gave it to Issei. She hoped that Issei will remember her someday, because that pendant was the very first gift Issei gave her, but giving it in front of her peerage was a fatal mistake. This is? Issei asked. He swore that he already saw it somewhere, it was not an expensive pendant, in fact, it was a cheap pendant you can get from a shady old man who sells accessories during a festival. My protective charm, may it protect you Haidu kun Sona said with smile, it was kind of fond smile when she shows affection to her sister or her peerage. Issei wanted to decline earlier, but after showed that kind of smile and the smell she released, he refrained, moreover that the pendant brought a memory to him, but he still cannot point his finger to what memory. Thank you. Issei said before he's leaving. I see, so that's the reason you wanted to protect Haidu kun Kaichu. Tsubaki suddenly said with smug smile after the young boy left the room. Of course, everyone became curious with Tsubaki's statement. It was fatal mistake Sona made. She never told about it even to Tsubaki, but Tsubaki knew it from Serafal, Sona's elder sister. The story of Sona's first love that made Serafal almost committed suicide. What is it Tsubaki-senpai? Don't tell me Kaichu likes Haidu. They all saw Sona's face that already read out of embarrassment, she cannot deny the fact that she's in love with Issei. That fact was left a stinging pain inside the youngest member of student council, she never knew that a rival would be her king, she wanted to cheers and support Sona, but on the other hand she would be heartbroken if they're dating, but she shrugged it off and decided to think about it later, because there's something that she never saw before. Aya. Kaichu is cute. They chorused after they saw Sona's expression, fatal mistake indeed to be teased by her peerage. Enough you guys, go back to work. Not only that, most likely Haidu kun is Kaichu's first love. But the bombshell Tsubaki dropped, Issei's thought that he disturbed their work was in vain. Issei is currently confused he was given a pendant that a girl just wore. Not because he knew that Sona likes him, but because it was nostalgic to him, a pendant and the smile showed to him earlier. He raked his brain for the memory, but he needs one more push to remember. But his struggle to remember suddenly disturbed by hostile smells coming toward him. He slipped the pendant he received to his pocket, in front of him stand two fallen angels, both men, releasing disgusting bloodlust smell from them. This is the first time that Issei smells such aroma, and this is will be his first real battle. Stop boy. What do you need from me? Yeah, you are to die here. Fallen Angel B shouted as he created a spear of light and tried to stab Issei with it. Issei dodged by jumping backward. Remember the training you did these past years, Issei. Yeah. Die. Fallen Angel A shouted as he charged forward. Seeing the course of the charging Fallen Angel, Issei spun his body and landed his heel straight to Fallen A's temple and slammed him to the ground. Utilizing the other fallen angel's surprise, Issei charged forward and gave him a low jab, but the result was quite gruesome, he blew a hole in the stomach. Mo monster fallen angel B muttered as his strength and his life vanished from his body. You overdid it Issei. Sorry. Issei moved to check the one he kicked but he also died, his skull destroyed along with his brain. I think you should control yourself more Issei, you will make huge uproar now. What should I do Drake? Collect their body and burn them, at least the suspect will increase. Yes. After burning them with a fire spell, Issei went home, not forget that he used cleaning magic to remove the bloodstains, or his aunt would go crazy if she saw it on Issei's uniform. 
Issei realized something from this attack, Rainer must be captured by them so he couldn't meet her, he sighed, regretting why he didn't think about it earlier, he could interrogate one of them first. He walked home and then remembered that his fridge almost empty, so he had to buy groceries from the supermarket. Coincidentally, he smelled another fallen angel, but he can't feel the aura of fallen angel. He knew that this fallen angel is far stronger than the ones who attacked him earlier, but he is confused at the smell coming from the crowd of human who attending some kind of event. Issei saw a man walking out from the event hall with a trophy in his hand. He had tall stature, black hair with golden bangs and goatee. He immediately directed his gaze toward Issei, he cannot identify the young boy as a human from his aura, as he already had an aura of the dragon, almost the same aura with the red one that he felt during subjugation of the heavenly dragons. Yo, dragon boy, it is such coincidence we meet here. Azazel grinned as he greets Issei. What do you want here, leader of fallen angel Azazel-sama? The reason I'm here would not be good to be spoken here, how about we had tea in your apartment? Fine, but I will buy what I need first. I'll pay your groceries if you cook dinner for me, I heard from Rainer that you always cook. Is Rainer sent safe? I tell you when we arrive at your apartment. Seeing the change of his mood, Issei just walked toward the supermarket with Azazel following him closely. He wanted to quickly know what has really happened to Rainer. Rainer contacted me yesterday, right after she failed to finish you off. I'm not the one ordered for it for your information, killing such good specimen like you would be a waste. Azazel said before Issei could say anything. So what happened to her after she reported to you? According to my other subordinates, she was captured by the team leader and his henchmen and tortured. Azazel answered. Do you know where they are? Issei asked. Sorry, I still digging about it, and also I found something else. What is it? There's a nun with sacred gear sent here, she will arrive tomorrow apparently, I want you to save them both. Okay, but quickly finish your digging so I could save them. Don't worry, Rainer isn't weak. Azazel assured him. No matter how strong her body is, what if she's raped and had her mind broken too? Issei asked, that was his genuine concern even if Rainer is a fallen angel, she also a woman, and something like rape is something he detested. Azazel laughed hearing Issei's statement, Rainer reported to him that he is completely emotionless, but in his eyes, Issei still had the most important emotion left. Care. Issei himself doesn't realize that he already relearned how to care. He doesn't even care when he saw his parent dead bodies, but living with Hisako made him care, at least care to Hisako, he always thought that it is to return the favor he received. Don't worry about that, Rainer can't be raped, I created a spell that protects the women fallen angel who's still weak from being raped, one wrong move, the rapist would dead in agony, at least his tool would die. Azazel said with a sadistic grin. So Drake, how strong you would assess his say? He should be around an ancient class dragon. Drake answered. Just one step before dragon king. Damn it Drake. Azazel said with sour smile. The white one who affiliated with Grigori hasn't reached that level yet, even though he was trained with the best trainer and cutting edge technology. Because I had many people taught me. Many people taught you? Azazel curiously asked. The past possessor souls inside boosted gear, he conquered and had them to taught him. Azazel white in her eyes hearing Drake explanation, the past possessor of boosted gear usually bear strong hatred, especially toward the white one, but to think that they conquered by this boy. What? He already conquered the past Sekar Uites. Issei tilted his head as he cannot understand why Azazel very surprised. Is that really something surprising Drake? Drake sighed when Issei asked it, well it is his fault that he never told Issei directly. You know, you are the first to conquer them, even more surprising that you did it only in half day. Half a day the time that Issei needed to stay pure and uncorrupted, making thousands lingering souls inside boosted gear, drop their hatred and regain their humanity. Issei once asked Drake how to be strong enough, so the tragedy like that won't happen again, at least he could be strong enough to protect his aunt, so he brought Issei to the deep consciousness of the sacred gear. It was a big gamble that Issei whether he give in to corruption or not, and Drake being crazy to throw a kid in the middle of the typhoon of hatred and rage without any advice. And what he did inside the swirling hatred. Simply nothing, he just stared back at the one who glared at him with an empty gaze that pierced even hatred through. When those hatreds start to die down, Issei only said. I want to be strong so I can protect. Those words erased most of their hatred, especially toward the white one. They decided to help Issei to be what he wanted. They started to teach him martial arts, magic spells, math, science, anything that useful to him to achieve his goal. He trained inside his deep consciousness, but his body also grew from it. Drake doesn't even know about it, while well, Issei can attain the techniques his body shouldn't grow stronger. That's the norm, but this is the first time that someone conquered the hatred of the past possessor of boosted gear, so this is also the first time for Drake to face this wonderful cheat. He trained almost every night inside it and as the result, he becomes truly strong. You are more extreme than I thought to say. Earlier before I met you, I was intercepted by two male fallen angels, sorry that I killed them, they attacked me without much warning. 
So be it, those fools should learn that they should not underestimate anybody. Eyes, I'm home, do we have a guest? The instant Hisako laid her eyes on Azazel and vice versa sweet smell filled the room. To say the scent almost unbearable, the sweet smell the released almost like a bomb dropped in front of him, he unconsciously pinched his nose to stop the smell from entering. Azazel immediately stood up from his chair and moved toward Hisako. Oh, boy. Drake cooed inside Issei's mind. Ah, hello ma'am, I'm Azazel, nice to meet you. Azazel introduced himself with gentleman gesture. Nice to meet you too, Azazel-san, I'm Shaiki Hisako, Issei's aunt. Aunt? I totally thought that you are his mother. You are such flatterer, Azazel-san. Issei cannot understand how both of them able to release such smell just by connecting their gaze, even more after they knew each other's name. But he secretly relieved that her aunt finally found someone whom she loves, and that person also likes her back, though that person is Fallen Angel's last boss. Asako for the first time able to avert her focus from her nephew, even though she doesn't know from where this man came from, only one thing she knew that this man in front of her is the one. The match from heaven. Azazel is also the same. He cannot suppress his desire to know the woman, he who desire knowledge more than anyone else, for the first time found a woman that able to make him forget his very own lust that made him fallen. They just stared at each other, ignoring anything around them, Issei included. The young dragon who ignored, nonchalantly plating the stew he cooked earlier on the table. Ahem. Issei cleared his throat loudly, disturbing the love birds from what they're doing. They panicked as they returned from their own world. Dinner is ready. Issei said as he finally caught their attention. Hey ah, thank you Ice, I'll go change first. The Sako immediately runs toward a room. Azizel-san, is there a way for Fallen Angel to reincarnate someone like the devil? Unfortunately not yet, why a sudden interest? You like my aunt right? Azazel groaned at Issei's question, he cannot deny that he's deeply interested in the young dragon's aunt. But he had no slightest hesitation to let her aunt to be fallen angel, so Hisako could be with Azazel, that was something intrigued Azazel. Nothing can escape those eyes huh? Even an idiot could see the way you look at my aunt is that you like her. Sorry for the wait. During the dinner Issei just observed them, occasionally he brought up to the conversation and answered just as needed. XXXXXXX. Next day after school, Issei quickly went out from school as one of the devils chased him, he knew that he's targeted by Rhea's Gremory, but he had no intention to just accept it, he had more important things to do than meeting with a Gremory. He slowed down after he shook his pursuer off, who easily give up when being shook and returned towards school. Issei walked toward his apartment but stopped when a blonde girl tripped over nothing in front of him. She's a human, but Issei smells a faint scent of fallen angel coming from her. Ha! How I can tripped over nothing like this? Issei decided to approach the girl. Are you alright? He asked as he lent the girl a hand to stand up. Hearing someone asked her, she raised her face. She reluctantly accepts the help since it is already offered. Why yes. She replied. I'll help you clean up. Issei said as he saw her luggage was scattered around. I'm sorry that I inconvenience you when we just met. They collected the scattered items and stuffed it to the briefcase. No need to be sorry. I'm Asia Argento. She introduced herself, I'm Haidu Issei. Issei replied. Thank you for helping me Issei-san, can I ask for direction where the church is? Issei knows where the church is, he was once brought there by Irina, his childhood friend who is a Christian, but after she moved to England, the church was abandoned ever since. There's one, but it's already been abandoned for years. Issei said. Is that so, but I was sent to town so maybe it is there Asia insisted, it made Issei suspicious that the fallen angel took the abandoned church as their base. Then the sound of something crashed can be heard, and they turn toward the source, a little boy collapsed near a bike. Asia who saw it immediately running toward the boy while Issei following her from behind. Apparently, the boy is alright, but he scrapped his knee. Without a second thought, Asia released her sacred gear, twilight healing as it is called and as the name suggested, it used for healing. The scraps quickly closing and healed. The boy thanked Asia before he rode his bike once again, leaving Issei and Asia behind. Seeing what she just did, Issei is sure that the nun Azazel asked him to save his Asia. What you just did Argento-san? Issei asked. This is the power I received from God with it I can heal anyone. Asia answered with complicated expression, she just shows her power, the one which made her condemned by her fellow of God's followers. But if you affiliated with the church, why you come here alone? Someone with power like you should be a precious asset to the church. Issei asked bluntly, but that makes Asia actually released a sad smell. I'm in exile my power is not limited to human, it also can be used to heal devils, and people doesn't like that. Asia answered, her expression turned into sad ones, just one mistake she was exiled. Devil? Issei dumbly asked, he already knew the existence of devils, but decided to play dumb about it. Ah I should not say that to normal human Asia said in panicked tone, she almost drowned a boy to the supernatural world, or so she thought. Please forget about it. Asia said as she bowed toward Issei. 
though Issei is positively sure that Asia is the one Azazel wanted, but to make sure he is correct he decides to ask Azazel first. Wait here Argento-san, I need to make a call first. Asia nodded. He took out his phone and called Azazel since they already exchanged number yesterday. The Oisei kun miss me? No, I don't miss you, is the nun you want me to save can heal anyone even a devil? Issei asked. Yeah, that one, how you could find her so quickly. Just coincidence. Bring her to your house first, I'll go there immediately, I'll be there in two hours. Sure. Sorry to make you wait, Argento-san. Ah the truth is I'm here to kidnap you. Greg laughed at Issei's method to bring Asia to his home. Eh? Asia was confused that suddenly the brown-haired teen declared to kidnap her. I don't want to use force on you so please follow me closely. Why? My client wants your sacred gear. Asia trembled as she heard that. The boy who helped her turned out to be no stranger to the supernatural. Moreover, he targeted her sacred gear. Hummer I had to use heavy-handed method. Asia nodded in fear, hoping that he would not hurt her if she disobeyed him. She was brought to the apartment where he lives. It was a normal living quarter. She was instructed to sit in the living room, and Issei gave her the TV remote, which confused her even more. She's already confused that Issei didn't gag and tie her down like kidnappers would do, now she was treated like a guest. The moment she let her guard down, her stomach start rumbling as she didn't take lunch. Hearing the sound, Issei reheat the stew leftover from yesterday and serve it to Asia. Issei mostly just stay silent, but he made sure that Asia comfortable during her stay and Asia herself reluctant to ask anything, even when she spotted a picture of Issei and Hisako. One hour and a half later of awkward silence for Asia, Hisako, and the client came at the same time. Ice, I'm home. Way to go Issei, suddenly bring someone this beautiful home. Hello, I'm Shiki Hisako, who's your name? A Asia Argento, it is a nice name how you meet with Ice. Hisako asked as she smiled. He helped me then kidnapped me here. Asia innocently replied. Hisako immediately stiffened and turned toward Issei with deadly glare on her eyes. Issei smells a deadly bloodlust that even nastier than the fallen angels who attacked him yesterday and strong disappointment, she really thought that Issei just did a crime. Come here Ice. Issei moved closer toward his aunt and with quick bodyworks, he already apprehends on the floor. Leaving Azazel in Asia astonished with what just happened. Isako used to be a tomboy and practice judo. Her last rank was the black belt before she retired to take care of Issei. Issei just lets her done it, so his aunt isn't suspicious about him. What does she meant by you kidnapping her? I never taught you to be a hoodlum. Hisako asked in a furious voice. Argento-san wanted to go to abandoned church over the hill, since she looks like a helpless hamster, so I brought her home with the pretext that I kidnapped her. Issei calmly explained. Hisako let out a big sigh and removed her hands from Issei's that she locked earlier. Her bloodlust disappeared completely. How why don't you just tell her that it is dangerous there? She asked. It would be troublesome if she still insists on going there so yeah, I just did it. Issei answered, Asako fascipumed herself, seeing her nephew antics, at least he didn't do it out of malice or something. Sorry, auntie. Issei apologized. Don't worry, Asia-chan, Ice doesn't kidnap you with ulterior motive, he just awkward kid, and it is dangerous for you to go to abandoned church there, I heard that group of punks occupied it. But, even if it is for your faith, they shouldn't send a single nun to somewhere dangerous. Yes, who knows that you are very strong Hisako-chan, to think that you could ground a man that easily. Now that all is over, Hisako turned to her room to change into casual clothes. Here is the client I told you about Argento-san. Issei pointed toward Azazel. I'm Azazel nice to meet you former holy maiden. Azazel introduced with grin. Azazel the leader of Fallen Angel. Asia already terrified, even more, when Azazel nodded confirming who he is. You should be under the protection of Grigori, why are you here? Someone told me that I should go here. I never give the order to send you here, this is suspicious. Now that Argento-san already here, it means I could do the other one right? Yeah. Issei entered his room and changed his uniform to casual black clothes, dark brown jeans, and black jumper with red dragon-shaped tribal design on the left chest. I trust that I can leave Argento-san and my aunt for a while to you Azazel-san. Azazel nodded with a smile, the last report this afternoon is that she's still alive, I hope it didn't change as the clock ticking. Tell Aunt Hisako to leave dinner for two. Roger, spare them if they are surrendered on first warning. Issei nodded. Where are you going Issei-san? Saving my friend. Issei said before making his way out. Issei arrived at the church front door, it was wide open, he could smell multiple scent there, but the most concerning to him was the smell of blood mixed with Rainer's scent. He entered the chapel, it was already in ruin, the statues already destroyed, the chairs thrown around, but none blocking the path in the middle. Well, 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 there's a boy who tried his courage here. A man with priest attire jumped down from above. Do you know what place this is boy? This is abandoned church and no good kid would go here. The man warned while laughing sinisterly. 
I know, and please move from there, you are blocking my path. Issei replied. Sorry boy, now that you see me how about become target for my new weapon, I just receive. A stray exorcist pulled the sword that hung at his waist, the sword shape itself is quite unique, but the sacred aura released from it indicated that it is not a normal sword. Be careful young un, that is Excalibur rapidity if the wielder mastered it, your defense would be battered. A past possessor warned him, he was former exorcist of Vatican named Feldev Gunther, he was entrusted to wield Excalibur rapidity in the past, along with the boosted gear, he carved his name as one of the strongest exorcist. He fought the hacker Yuiku and came out victorious, but with fatal injuries which force him to retire. He truly knew the real terror that the sword can spread because he used to wield it himself, but the opponent relatively greenhorn using it, but it will be better to be wary of the sword. Issei was being told that Excalibur only wielded by people who chosen by the sword itself, and if the church allows the Excalibur to be wielded by the chosen person, but this stray exorcist in front of him brought a real Excalibur fragment. It must be a stolen good. This is troublesome, but I guess I should defeat him and give the sword to Azazel-san, so he could return it to the church. Wise choice boy, Issei who stand and silent as he communicated with the spirit, irk the stray exorcist, hey, hey. I'm right here, or you want to taste my Excalibur Chan. I'm Freed Zelzen. Consider it a gift to accompany you to hell. Freed charged toward Issei, he slashed using the Excalibur vertically, tried to cut Issei down in symmetric manner. Issei raised his hand to meet the blade, he hardened his skin with Kai to the max without entering the dragon form. Loud sound of steel clashing each other filled the room. A stray exorcist widened his eyes in disbelief, the Excalibur blocked with arm no less, but not even scratch seen. Why it doesn't even leave a cut? Freed screeched. He couldn't believe that the Excalibur cannot cut through a boy. Maybe you should consider that you have been given a fake weapon. Issei said in flat tone. Feel offended by the young boy's words, freed wildly slashing his Excalibur which parried with almost no effort by Issei. Seeing the stray exorcist start to slow down, Issei decided to ask. Are you tired? Then now it's my turn. Issei took a deep breath before charging with inhuman speed, exceeding the speed of the stray exorcist that enhanced by the Excalibur. He grabbed the stray's hand that held the Excalibur with his left and chopped the shoulder with right hand and cut it off from the base, blood sprayed around the wound and some stuck on Issei's outfit. Wah! It hurt. It hurt. Of course it's hurt, I chopped your hand off. Issei commented as he threw Freed's hand to the side along with the Excalibur. A stray exorcist pulled his gun and start barraging Issei. Die. Die. This monster. Die. The bullets were blocked by Issei's hard skin, you think when Excalibur cannot hurt me a gun can? Issei asked bluntly. I'm high to Issei, consider it a gift to accompany you to hell. Issei said as in his hand emerged red colored ball of energy that spinning in terrifying speed. Spiral Dragon Shot. Issei released the energy ball toward the desperate stray exorcist, it shredded the upper part of his body, ultimately killing Freed. It is just me or you secretly like Gor Issei. Drag sighed as he saw the emotionless boy killed his enemy in cruel manner with any remorse. Sorry Drag, I feel that I had to kill this one without any chance for him to be resurrected, or he could endanger Aunt Hisako. Issei said in his mind. A a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a Someone letting out a blood curling scream. That voice Rainer San. Let's hurry. Drake said. Issei immediately sprinted to the underground facility. He ran toward where his nose lead him. Issei arrived at the innermost chamber, used as prison and torturing room. He saw a girl crucified on the cross. From her left eye socket, blood flowing out. Her expression shows that she already resigned her fate. In front of her, a man with blue spear already aimed his spear at a right eye. On the side, he saw two fallen angel women being apprehended by few men each, they roared toward the fallen angel man to not hurting Rainer anymore. Don't seek you bastard. Stop. Kalwerner shouted, but she could not do anything to save her friend. No. Stop. Middle screamed as she cried in her helplessness. Beg Rainer, if you beg I might reconsider killing you. The male fallen angel called Donaseek, already aimed for Rainer's other eye. Issei felt that Rainer's vital sign already weakening considerably, it would be dangerous if she lose any more blood from her body. Issei charged inside and grabbed the man's hand before he could stab Rainer. No, you are not hurting her again. Issei said. Who are you? Go away. Donaseek tried to free his hand from Issei but no avail, and get thrown toward the door by the brunette. Everyone was surprised that a boy able to infiltrated their headquarters, even Rainer who already hanging on a thread. Issei kun, she weakly muttered. I only told you this once, surrender, or else. Issei declared, he was told to spare his enemies if they surrender. Don't get too wide boy. Everyone, attack. Donaseek said as he tried to recover and charged at Issei, the fallen angel men who apprehended the fallen angel women, also immediately charged to attack the young dragon. I take it none of you surrender. 
Issei said as he created black ball and tennis ball size and throw it toward the center of the room. It pulled the fallen angels who charged at him and rounded them up in one spot. It was gravity ball that will suck anything in certain range predetermined by Issei for a short time. He casted another spell and slammed his hand toward the floor. Blue flare. Issei muttered and at the center of the room blue flame bursting from the floor, burning his enemies down to nothing while screaming in agony. Raynor, Kalawiner and Middle were speechless. They never thought that Issei was that strong, let alone massacred a small group of fallen angel without breaking any sweat. His magic looks wild, but it was calculated perfectly without any additional collateral damage, as magic practitioner, Kalawiner became deeply interested with Issei. The brunette turned toward the crucified fallen angel, her condition is very, Raynor san, are you alright? Issei asked, though he knew that Raynor already dying, but he's trying to take her attention. You are late Issei Kun Raynor muttered as she loses her consciousness. Her vital sign continued to drop, she could die any moment. Drake warned. Without much word, Issei removed the binding on Raynor and carried her. Issei hoped that Asia could help her, even if that means he had to leak everything to his aunt. Hey, thank you for saving us. Kalawiner said. Issei turned toward the fallen angel women whom he spared because they are most likely Raynor's friend, as they really desperate to stop Donaseek from hurting Raynor further. Sorry I don't have much time for chat. Come to the apartment at XXXX Street's room 303, as Azazel is waiting there, also could you bring the sword I left above? Leave it to us, please save Raynor. Middleton answered. Yes. Issei immediately dashed home, he put the concealing spell on so he won't attract attention. I'm home. Issei said as he entered his apartment. Well Ko who is that ice? Hisako asked as she saw Issei brought a girl home, not to mention her body is bloody and full of bruises and cuts. Without answering Hisako, Issei put Raynor down on top of the table, Asia was shocked that her condition is very severe. Argento-san, could you heal her? Issei asked. This is terrible. I will do what I can. Asia said as she immediately using twilight healing in full power to heal the fallen angel. Hisako was surprised seeing the wound start closing when covered by the green light Asia released. What happened to her earlier Issei? When I arrive, her eye was stabbed with a spear, her vital sign also continuously dropping, I don't know what to do. As Azul checked her wrist, even with treatment from Asia, the vital sign isn't getting stronger. No good Asia Chan alone isn't enough at this rate she would be a goner. As Azul muttered. Is there no other way to save her? Issei asked. As Azul closed his eyes in somber expression, only two ways I guess. What is it? Find a devil who willing to reincarnate her or have Drake to change her heart into dragon just like you. The Sako was very confused, she didn't understand what they just talk, devil, reincarnation, dragon, why topic like that appeared during when they tried to save a girl, are they turning into a cult? What are you talking about ice, Azazel san? Hisako decided to ask. I we will explain after we saved her auntie. Issei answered, she didn't satisfied with his answer, but seeing how they wanted to save the girl, she decided to believe in them. Issei could try to contact Sona, he knew that she can be trusted, but what if the evil pieces didn't accept the fallen angel, it will be more wasteful of time, no, I'm not risking her to turn her to the devil. Issei said. The risk was not worth it as she could die any moment now. So I guess you only have one choice. Azazel narrowed his eyes toward Raynor. He knew that he was the one who suggested it, it was abrupt suggestion however, the past possessors of boosted gear, never had any companion that was dragonified, same goes as his rival, the chance to save her is really low. That is plain reckless, I never change someone other than my host Drag tried to protest. There's first time for everything Drag, I'm counting on you. Issei said as he raised his left hand to his chest. Don't blame me if it is failed. Drag said in resigned tone, he knew his host won't back down of his decision. He knew that Issei would rather fail after trying it, rather than agonizing of doing nothing. Boosted gear. After he summoned boosted gear, he placed his hand on top of Raynor's chest. The gems start shining and inscription appeared along the boosted gear. Asako watched the scene before her with doubled confusion, she totally at loss when on Issei's hand appeared a red gauntlet. It appeared out of nowhere. The lights start to die down, but the green light changed to red light for a few seconds before it disappeared. Issei exhaled once, he relieved that it is a success. Way to go Issei, it is a success. As Azul said as he checked the fallen angel girl's vital sign which getting stronger. It is a relieved. Asia said as she smiled. Rainer regained her consciousness shortly after. This akin she muttered weakly when she saw Issei's figure. I'm sorry Rainer san if only I come earlier. Issei said. You saved me in the end so it's alright. She tried to smile. Can I get a glass of water? Rainer asked, Issei nodded and brought her what she wanted. Here. Issei supported her to sitting position and helped her to take a sip on her drink. Thank you, finally care to explain what happened here? Hisako asked, today her nephew went somewhere, returning home bringing a girl, still okay. 
but she didn't believe in anything occult or supernatural, until this very day, when suddenly a metal glove appeared out of nowhere on Issei's hand, without any trick, just a pure and green light that Asia released could heal bruises and cuts almost immediately. Alright first of all, Rainer who's still in Issei's hand suddenly convulsed, suddenly blood flowing from her pores. Aya. Rainer screamed as intense pain spreading throughout her body, caught everyone off guard. What happened, azazel -san? Issei asked, I don't know. Azazel shook his head as he doesn't understand what happened either, his expression also tells so. Most likely is that her new heart rejecting her blood. Drag speculated, Issei never experienced such condition because of his compatible body with boosted gear, it was bathed in dragon's aura for years before finally he changed to dragon starting from his heart. Is there anything I can do? Issei asked. Transfuse your blood to her Issei, while doing it, we should change all her organ to dragon too, but I don't know if it will work. Drake explained, this is the first time he was forced to change anyone else who isn't his host. Issei turned toward Hisako, and Hisako, do you have tool for transfusing blood? Issei asked. Hisako works for hospital equipment distributor, she brought some samples home from time to time, Issei hoped that Hisako had some, but received no answer, since she terrified because the girl started bleeding from every part of her body. Aunt Hisako. Issei snapped his aunt who's still in middle of her trance. What happened? Hisako asked, she still cannot understand what is really happening in front of her eyes. Azazel moved closely to Hisako and tapped her shoulder. Calm down Hisako-chan Issei asked you if you have tool for transfusing blood. Azazel said in a gentle voice. I have some, but what you wanted to do with it? Hisako asked, bring it here first, we will explain. Azazel said in same tone as earlier, alright. Hisako nodded and pulled a direct blood transfusion tube from her stock cabinet, one side has bigger needle, while the other end is slim, just like normal needle. Your ice, but you don't plan to transfuse your blood to her alone right? Hisako asked. Normally human would die if they lost more than 30% of their blood, it was the common knowledge for human. No, only my blood that is most likely accepted. Issei answered, but your blood alone won't be enough to accommodate two people, you will die. You two will die. Hisako shouted. Issei is trying to save a life, but it never worth it if he died in the process. Issei reluctant to answer, but it will dangerous if Hisako stopped him halfway. He knew that Hisako is really care about him, but he thought that this is a mess he made, so he will clean up after himself. It's fine, I'm not a human anymore. Issei answered, there's no regret or disdain in his voice. Hisako couldn't hide her surprise that her nephew suddenly declared that he isn't human. What are you talking about Ice? Hisako asked. She tried her best to hold her tears back. You of all people should know Aunt Hisako, do you forget that you found me with my shirt had a slit hole resembling knife stab smeared in blood? Issei asked, Hisako was the one live closest to the Haidu, and the very first person Issei called after the police, she tried to shrug it off, she tried to deny any possibility, as long as her young nephew was still alive. But he brought it up now. Don't tell me. Yeah, my heart was stabbed with that knife. That was the moment I stopped being a human. Issei's aunt finally cannot hold her tears back, but she still try to reason to say that he's a human. Why that's a lie right Ice? Hisako asked. Issei closed his eyes before answering his aunt. Unfortunately, no. He transformed his right arm into dragon. Seeing the young dragon's arms changed, Hisako slumped down to the floor, she just cried, she couldn't believe that Issei is no longer a human like her, but in the corner of her heart, she wanted to truly believe in Issei. That Issei is still her nephew. Seeing her aunt crying like that, Issei's heart is aching, he made the most important person in his life sad, he just hoped that Hisako would forgive him for deceiving her. But right now, he had more important matter to take care of. He cancelled his transformation and made his hand free of Kai or the needle would break instead of piercing his skin. After that he the other end directly at Rainer's heart. He purposely increased his heartbeat rate to pump the blood toward the fallen angel girl. Asia who recovered from her shock, immediately assisted Issei by cleaning the blood with her towel, and tried to heal any injury that appear from blood bursting out. As Azul just sat beside Hisako, he grabbed her shoulder and pulled her closer to him. He know that it is must be very hard to suddenly shove the fact that your family you cherish turned out to be monster, he also prepared to be rejected by her, someone who become more important to him than sacred gear. Calm down Hisako-chan it might be a little hard to believe, but trust me, he's still your nephew. Azazel offered some comfort, Azazel san she muttered as he clenched Azazel's clothes. It was the best comfort she can receive right now. Boost. 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 Issei placed his hand on his hip. Gift. He muttered, Issei transferred the boost toward his marrow, so it could maximize the blood production. Transfer. Now let's do it drag. Yeah. Issei immediately worked to change Rainer's whole body, if her heart could receive the transformation, her other parts of her body should be able to. 
The Sako now is calmer, though it is unbelievable, she want to try to believe that in this world there's more than human know. Who is he talking to Azazel-san? She asked, she was really curious about the mysterious voice that emerged from nowhere in the conversation. Azazel decided that start from the beginning. God, the biblical faction God, the strongest existence in this realm loves human. Human, the weakest existence but their potential is almost infinity, and for them, he created powerful item called sacred gear. So Issei had the sacred gear you talking about? Azazel nodded. Yes. Issei's sacred gear is particularly strong one, it is called boosted gear, it user could endlessly stronger as long as his body could accept. Asia Chan over there also had sacred gear called twilight healing, she could heal anyone regardless of their race. But there's quite a big difference from their sacred gears, inside Issei's sacred gear, a soul of dragon was trapped inside, while Asia's doesn't have any soul inside it. And that dragon was not just any dragon too, he was called the heavenly dragon of domination, because he's very powerful among the dragons, if using military rank, his rank would be the lieutenant general. He and his rival was very strong existence that need angel, fallen angel and devil factions to work together to defeat them. Which one are you Azazel-san? Hisako decided to ask, she wanted to know more about him. I'm a fallen angel. Azazel answered truthfully, he spread his wings as a proof. His twelve wings, his symbol of power. Hisako was surprised that pervert governor sprung out wings out of nowhere, but she understand that he wanted her to believe. I see. She said as she smiled toward Azazel. You seem really easy to accept Hisako-chan. I decided to put my trust in your words, no matter what I says he's still my nephew. Azazel smiled as her answer, not many would act like her, accepting abnormal things like sacred gear, more with someone that already left their humanity behind. Issei is a creative kid despite of his appearance, he able to utilize boosted gear and little out of the way. Azazel tried to change the topic, so it wouldn't set in Hisako any longer, he tried to appeal Issei. What do you mean? Hisako asked. He amplified his blood regeneration on top that he's a dragon now, he should be made enough blood for Raynor too. Azazel explained, so you knew her after all. Hisako said. She's my subordinate. You might know her as Yuma. Azazel replied. Yuma was someone was the first who approached Issei to be her friend, I see, so that's why Ice is desperate. Hisako smiled, Issei always cares for his friends, though he can't express it directly now. Issei felt that two people he met earlier come toward this room, without raising his head in concentration from Raynor, Azazel-san, your subordinates are coming to here, there's something I left behind earlier and asked them to retrieve it. I hope they found it. He said. Azazel-san nodded as he opened the door and let them in. Excuse us. Al Werner and Middleton introduced themselves to Hisako who followed Azazel near, they was very surprised the trainer became a bloody mess, and the boy transfusing his blood for the raven-haired fallen angel. Concerned as they are, they had more concerning matter at hand. This might need immediate concern Azazel-sama. Cal Werner said as she handed the Excalibur that freed Zelzin used to fight Issei. Azazel examined the sword and indeed that it is real Excalibur fragment, he received report that from six fragments that church possessed, three was stolen, and now one of it is in his hand. Asako curiously looking at the sword as Azazel examined it, this is a real sword? She asked. Azazel smirked at her question, he was amused that she show interest in the sword. Not just any sword, Hisako chan It was an Excalibur fragment, legendary sword that shattered during Great War, and alchemically forged into seven swords with unique ability, and this is one piece of it. Azazel explained in easy to understand manner, making Kalawarner and Middle a bit confused. This sword not supposed to be here, on top of hand it was used by stray exorcist from our faction, though he already killed by Haidu Issei. Kalawarner reported. She agreed with Middle to not tell about the condition of the corpses that tried to oppose Issei, it was gruesome not to mention, he shredded his enemy to bloody pulp. The Sako was shocked when she heard that Issei killed someone. She knew that it could be possible, but she still feels sad about it, and she can't do anything if Issei inevitably killed someone again in the future. But he asked them to surrender first. Middle said after she saw Hisako's expression of sadness, I see. Hisako muttered, it gives little relief that Issei didn't kill someone on whim. Don't worry Issei is not someone who kill for pleasure. Hisako nodded. Done, there should be no trouble anymore. Issei said as he finally done with his work, from today on, fallen angel Rainer is no more. Ala Chan, Middle Chan, could you inform Penemu to prepare a prosthetic eye because Rainer will need it, tell her to prepare I-781, and just leave this sword here, don't tell anyone regarding it. Azazel gave order to his subordinates. Yes, please excuse us. Al Werner and Middle bowed toward Azazel before gone inside magic circle. Issei thanked Asia for helping him to take care of Rainer and clean the mess up with magic, Hisako shocked that the blood was gone an instant, not even single drop of it left, whether it was on Rainer's body or cloth Asia used to wipe it or the table where Issei operated the fallen angel girl. If possible she wanted to learn this very convenient magic. 
but it revealed every speck of the dragon girl's body which stark since the beginning, even though Issei didn't show any reaction to it, Hisako was the one who blushed instead, she thought that it is very embarrassing for a girl to be seen by a boy. Bring her to your room Issei, after that we will talk. Hisako said as she blushed. Yes, auntie. Issei answered as he carried Raynor to his room, he felt that her life force steadily increased. Not long after he laid the former fallen angel, his aunt came to his room with clothes and put it on Raynor. They had a quick dinner before they start to talk. After the discussion, history lesson, and reprimand, Issei retired to his room. Asia stayed in Hisako's room, currently used as hugging pillow by Hisako, since she never got chance to spend time like this with her nieces, her eldest brother's twin daughters. Heck, they never meet even once since she took care of Issei. But Asia didn't mind in slightest as she wanted some attention, she lives her life alone, because of her holy maiden title. The warm hug Hisako gave her was new experience for her. Issei just sat on a chair besides the sleeping girl, he silently read a book to spend time, since he became a dragon, he doesn't need to sleep for a week if only doing normal activity, he sleep every day because he need to train. When almost down, Raynor let out a soft grunt, disturbing her sleeping rhythm as a sign that she finally regained her consciousness. She opened her right eye, and her savior's figure can be seen. Good morning Raynor-san. Issei greeted her as he put the book aside. Good morning Issei Kun Raynor returned his greeting. How do you feel? Issei asked. Great I suppose. Raynor answered, her body felt great like it was never before. Is that so? I'm really sorry Raynor-san I denied you of your birth. Issei bowed as he apologized, he was doing it without her agreement after all. It was selfishness of his part, he couldn't bear that his friend died without him trying anything. Raynor know that she no longer a fallen angel, but closer to Issei, a dragon. Raynor put out a sad smile, she was abandoned years ago and lives alone until Azazel found her and brought her to Grigori. I don't even know how their face looks like it's okay Issei Kun, I'm happier right now that I'm closer to you. Raynor said as she released happy Ferriman. Issei was relieved that Raynor not suffer emotions loss like him. You can use this for a while. Issei handed her a wide eye patch to cover her left eye that stabbed by spear. Geez, at least react a little. Raynor pouted as she put on the eye patch. How do I look? Raynor asked as she bruised her hair that covered left part of her face to behind of her ear. You are a beautiful person, Raynor san. Issei answered, Raynor's beauty has definitely exceeded most of girls in his school with few exceptions. Raynor's face immediately became beet red, she never thought that Issei would praise her. Th thank you. Raynor said with shy tone. Ni Issei kun, come closer. Issei came closer to Raynor, and she pulled him to a hug. I'm still alive right now all is because of you, therefore I belong to you. Raynor said. She's really grateful that Issei saved her life even when it means that she had to give up her past self. That's why she decided to dedicate her life to Issei. You don't need to go that far Raynor san, we are friend. I didn't save you so you will belong to me. Issei tried to deny it, he didn't save her so she would owe him or something. I know, that's why I decided that I will follow you, anything you decide even if you want to destroy the world, I will stay beside you. Raynor declared. Issei could smell strong determination smell, he knew that it will be useless to try to stop her any further. Raynor released Issei off, and he could see her determined face. Then Raynor san, if you want to stay with me I have one request to you. Issei said, it made the dragon girl curious. What is it? Raynor asked. If you think something happened that I should express my emotion but I can't, can you express it in my stead? Issei requested. Happy and sad, those were the feelings swirling inside Raynor right now. She was happy that Issei relied on her, but she was sad because it sounded that Issei gave up to try to retain his feelings again. Raynor patted Issei's head and stroked it gently, well, she's older than Issei and try to act it up. I promise you that, Issei Kun, but promise me one thing too, never give up on your feelings and emotions, you still had it inside you. Raynor said with determined tone. Yes. Issei smiles toward Raynor, making her feel warm, hot, boiled, as his smile burning into her memory. She couldn't help but fall in deeper into the hole called love for the young dragon. Show me your eye Raynor. Azazel ordered. Yes. Raynor removed her eye patch and show it to Azazel. There still remain of your eye inside, I will remove it first. Azazel said as he put his index finger on outer side of Raynor's eye, he swiped it down slowly before he put his palm in front of Raynor's left eye socket. He used magic to pull out the broken eye out and put it on small container. Asia who was watching it, taken aback when she saw the broken eye. Azazel who seeing Asia's reaction, deliberately showing it to the helpless little nun and get scolded by Hisako before he put the prosthetic eye to replace Raynor's eye. Okay prepare for little sting from the nerves connecting. Azazel warned, not long after that, the eye became active and executing the starting program, and tried to connecting the nerves. Ugh. Raynor grunted, it felt like she was pricked by ten thousands needles instantly, but the pain subsides immediately after that. How is it? Azazel asked. 
It hurt so much. Rainer protested, well it is hurt, it doesn't hurt as much as when her eye was stabbed and tortured for days. She tried to look around with it and seems working like it was intended. Prosthetic eye huh that's very cutting edge technology that humans still develop, to think that the supernatural already completed such advanced product. Hisako commented, she knew that the current prosthesis eye only used as decoration and cannot replace real eye. Hisako decided to take a day off since it will be no good to just left Asia and Rainer who's still recuperating alone and she get the chance to see something unusual. With current human's technology, it will be a long time before a prosthesis eye could replace real eye, the one I gave to Rainer was imbued with magic and controlled with magic power. As Izzel explained. Magic is really cheating Hisako's side. Ugh what features you put in the prosthetic eye Azizel Sama? I practically able to see everyone's aura here. Rainer asked, she was able to see everyone's aura, Azizel's color was white with black spotting here and there, Asia was green aura, and Hisako was light blue and brown aura, while from her own body, Rainer emitting red and white aura. Visualize aura, power recognition, and Hawkeye. Those three should help you considerably, and I expect to collect data from you. Azizel answered while smirking. As you wish. The dragon girl answered as put the eye patch to cover her artificial eye, since she had no idea how to turn it off, and it got her to think, Azizel's help never come free, and to think that he immediately troubled himself to come here and install the eye on her was something suspicious. By the way Azizel-sama, you are not here just because you want to put this eye on me are you? Rainer asked as Azizel took a seat across her and Hisako who still fascinated by the prosthetic eye that completely working. It's always help when you had sharp-minded subordinates. Azizel grinned, Rainer regretted that she asked. I know you need time to recuperate but, I will have you to enroll at Kuo Academy to keep an eye on the devils, if something happened to them, war could be inevitable. Azizel explained. War? Yeah, a war that potentially devastating the three factions to extinction. Azizel sighed. But why devils in Isis school become important? Hisako asked. Because they are the devil lord's little sisters. Rhea's Gremory is the Devil Lord Serzich Lucifer's little sister, and Sona Citri is the Devil Lord Seraphol Leviathan's little sister, and both of them had tendency to spoil their little sister Rotten. If they heard that their sisters were harmed, they would have enough excuse to attack other factions, especially with the Excalibur present here. As Azizel explained as he pointed to the Excalibur that left in the corner of the living room, Asia and Raynor dreaded with the fact that there will be a war, but Hisako took interest on the Devil Lord instead. Seraphol. Where did I hear that name before? Hisako muttered to herself. Do you know her Hisako-chan? Azizel asked. Hisako was deep in her thought, she definitely knew the name, because it was unusual name combination. Serafal sona chan Hisako finally remembered their meeting with Serafal and Sona, especially what she did to say, just the thought alone made her anger rise. Her anger mixed with killing intent scared everyone present including the fallen archangel. He never found human could release that kind of killing intent, not even God was this scary when he decided to leave the heaven. Azizel, Asia and Rainer tried to calm her down, luckily she quick to cool down. She put a bitter smile when she saw a trace of fear on the three, and apologize, in their heart, they vowed to never piss Hisako off. Hisako sends killing intent alone could freeze low-rank supernatural creatures. Rainer commented, it was really scary. I'm sorry you too, I easily emotional Hisako apologized while smiling bitterly. What kind of meeting with Seraphal and Sona-chan that made you that angry Hisako-chan? Azizel insensitively asked, he was rather curious that a human like Hisako knew one of Devil Lord's name. Rather than that, Ice and Sona-chan were adorable back there, they even made promise to marry someday, Hisako changed the topic to the memory she rather fond, but the word promise to marry is bothering Rainer a little. Issei who emotionless promised to marry someone, that sound wonderful, Hisako-san. Asia said. Did Issei and Sona-chan met during summer festival? Azizel asked. Yes, how did you know, Azizel-san? Are they wearing a pendant after the festival? Azizel asked again, it was a specific question that quite surprising Hisako. Yes. Hearing Issei's aunt answer, Azizel laughed that made the women confused, he laughed at the coincidence that happened, to think that the boy who with Sona was Issei. Is there anything funny Azizel-sama? Rainer asked, she suspected Azizel knew something about their relationship. What a small world we live in truly. Azizel muttered in amusement. But from the talk yesterday, looks like Ice didn't realize that Sona-chan was the one who warned him. Hisako said since there's no way Issei would forget to mention such important acquaintance. Azizel turned to Rainer with teasing smile. You still have chance Rainer. He said and Rainer's face instantly red. Wh what are you talking about Azizel Sama? She retorted. My Hisako muttered as she realized that the former fallen is in love with her nephew. Bra rather than that, Issei Kun is targeted by Grimory Devil, war could be started before Kakabiel finished his plan. Rainer deliberately changed the topic. What do you mean Rainer? 
Azazel asked. Issei Kun doesn't have any mercy toward his enemies, if that Gremory marked as hostile by Issei Kun Rainer, didn't finish her sentence, since she doesn't thought to speak about it, but it is enough to imply that Gremory Devil could be slaughtered by Issei rather than Kakabiel. That's real bad, Hisako Chan called Issei immediately. Azazel ordered immediately. Hisako immediately grabbed her phone and called Issei, hoping that she's not too late. 20 minutes prior, Issei prepared to return home but not as rushed as before, he knew that a devil approached his class, the only male devil around. The devil searched around the class and relieved that he doesn't need to search for him, he quickly approached him. Hello, hi do Issei Kun. Issei raised his head and see the blonde devil. Who are you? Issei asked as formality. The class became crowded that Kiba came contact with Issei, the two princes who never even talked to each other. Some girls even started their delusion about BL between them. I'm Kiba Yudo, can you follow me to meet with someone, but you wanted to meet you. Kiba invited him with smile. If she wanted to meet me why she should send you instead of coming by herself? Issei asked with flat tone. But you just follow me? Issei sighed. Fine. He stood up and followed the blonde devil closely, he need to be clear with Ria's gremory anyway. They walked toward the old building in the forest area of the school. Issei knew that they used one of the room in the old building as their headquarters just like Sona used the student council office, so he never get close to there before. Closer to the building Issei smells the stench of devils etched with greed smell, he felt little regret for accepting. They entered the building, it was a dark but clean place. This is the room. Kiba said as they arrive at the big door on the second floor. Kiba knocked the door. Come in. Kiba then opened the door, revealing dark room with candles as illumination, inside it Issei could feel three presences. He entered the room and spotted a devil with long black hair who had aura of mature woman, and the other one was petite girl with white hair, who nibbling on her snacks and mysteriously smells like a cat. Welcome. A black-haired devil girl greeted him with smile planted on her lips, Issei smell peculiar smell coming from her that's similar to Azazel and Rainer used to. Her body is too Y for high school girl, 100 of 100 men would say she's beautiful, and why if no gay included. Please sit over here. Issei nodded and walked toward the sofa. On the corner of the room, he heard water showered. Please wait for our butchu to finish her bath. She said while still smiling. Issei just silently tried to relax himself, he decided not to drink the tea or eating the snack prepared on the table for him, though all of it just normal without poison or drug. Sorry for the wait. The red-haired devil comes out with her hair still wet, she smells like strawberry for her servant, but she smells nasty greed and unhealthy ambition for Issei. Her body shape was no less buxom and why than the black-haired female devil in the room, but for Issei, she smells nastier than spoiled meat. She smiled as she eyed Issei, thinking that she will grasp the boosted gear to use it for her personal gain. Hello hi do Issei Kun, I'm Ria's Gremory. She introduces herself as she sits beside Issei. Since she was failed to obtain him because the fallen angel's failure, now she tried to get Amuli, using her body to entice Issei, the young dragon might devoid of emotions, but his lust is still there, but he able to be in total control of it, since there's no trigger than able to inflate it without his control. Seeing no reaction from him, Himajima Akeno entered the fray. Do you two have no shame? Issei asked after seeing unsightly behavior from his two seniors, they both surprised that Issei didn't phase by their beauty and buxom body. If you only call me for this then please excuse me. Issei stood up and moved toward the door. Wait. Rias shouted. Is there anything else you wanted Gremory senpai? Issei said as he glanced toward the red-haired devil. I want you to be member of my peerage. Rias said with commanding tone, Issei then straightened his eyesight toward the door, he knew that it come to this, and he has no interest to become a devil. No, thank you. I had no interest in becoming a devil, please excuse me. Issei declined with a flat tone. Rias gritted her teeth in anger, she was never to climb directly. But she suppressed it so it wouldn't show on her face. If you join my peerage I could grant anything you wish, just name it, and I will grant it for you. Rias tried to charm him using, since there's no human could resist their desire especially human in their puberty. I don't have any wish that need you to grant it, so no thanks and don't bother me again, since I have no intention to become a devil. Issei repeated the last part. You lowly human. How dare you decline my invitation. Rhea shouted in anger, no human ever declined her twice except this one boy. After you failed to make me owe favor to you, you tried to entice me with your body and sweet words of desire, but after revealing your real side, Shitori Kaichu definitely has better chance to make me join her peerage. Issei said before he resumed his march toward the door. If he wanted to be a devil, master like Sauna would definitely better than the red-haired devil. Udo. Rias called out the name of his servant, without any word to answer, he summoned a sword and blocked the door. So now after all of that failed you tried to force me. Issei sighed. You said Sona had the better chance than me, then I will prove that it is wrong. My peerage is superior to Sona's. Rias spouted. Sona. Issei muttered to himself. 
that was a nostalgic name he never heard for these past years, in his mind, Sona's smile she showed few days ago, and Sona's smile ten years ago overlapped as they became one. The memories of their meeting flooded the brunette's mind. Sona and Sona how could it slip from his mind when he was given clue here and there by her. Now he remembered everything, Sona was the girl he met ten years ago during summer festival, the pendant she gave him few days ago, was a part of pair pendant that is say bye for them to honor their promise to each other. He was really affectionate to the girl that time, but he completely forgotten about her because of that incident, and he sought to be stronger, stronger, so the tragedy doesn't repeat once again. But he never thought that Sona still cherished their promise and her affection toward him for a long time. Seeing Issei just stand there without reaction, Riaz became angrier and commanded, Yudo attack him. Her knight immediately attacking Issei with his sword, but Issei react faster as he smells the hostile smell. I see, you won't let me off peacefully. Issei said with flat tone, but it was his declaration of enemy, once he crossed, he won't give any chance for redemption. He swayed his body as necessary to dodge the blade, before he countered, his phone ringing. He took his phone out from his pocket. It was a call from his aunt. This was a higher priority for Issei to receive than to massacre his enemies in front of him. Yes madam. Issei answered he didn't want his enemies to know that he's speaking to his aunt. He'll mock that Issei receiving phone call in middle of being attacked, Kiba continuously slashed him without connecting any hit toward his target. Ice, no matter what happened, you cannot kill Gremory Devil and her peerage members. Hisako warned. Issei was confused, but he decided to follow his aunt's request. Affirmative, madam. I heard something swinging, where are you? Ice Hisako asked as she heard the sound. Ah, a senpai decided to test me on fitness program, don't worry it's just a sword. Issei answered lightly. Return in one piece. Hisako sighed, she knew that right now near Issei the Gremory Devil and her peerage are there, just glad that it was in nick of time. Affirmative madam. Issei ended his phone call. Sorry, I had more important business than playing along with you. Issei grabbed Kiba's hand and throw him toward Ria's, and because of the lack of wariness they impacted and thrown softly to the wall, that won't be much damage to each other, since Issei adjusted the power. Akeno and Kaneko were surprised that it happened really quick. Excuse me. Issei said as he doesn't even look back. Chase him. Akeno immediately followed him, while the youngest devil immediately jumped off the window to block door toward the outside. Kiba immediately stand up, he also jumped from the window, fighting outside without many obstacles would giving an advantage to him. Akeno who followed Issei from inside saw him walking without rush like he felt there's nothing can harm him in there. Stop. Akeno yelled and Issei did as she yelled, he turned his body to meet face to face with his senior. He quietly put invisible barrier around them mostly to avoid voice from leaking, but he felt that Gremory isn't trying to chase him and stay in the room. I have important business to take care of, so please be quick, if you want to ask why I didn't react to your SU swing around earlier, because I had no such interest in someone who sold her body to get what she wanted, then act like she was all greatness of world. Issei answered with what on his mind, surprising Akeno, but she not here for that. I found someone who can respect a decline is more appealing like Shitori Kaichu. Issei continued, so Sona already offered you, why you decline it if she's more appealing? Akeno asked as she doesn't understand his preference. I already said someone who respect decline, I don't have any interest to become a devil, that was what I already said to Shitori Kaichu and she respected, I tried to convey that to your king, but looks like she didn't want to listen. Issei explained. From the fight against Yudo earlier, Akeno knew little extent of his strength, to perfectly dodge sword attack while accepting a phone call, it would require a great deal of concentration and speed. The current host of boosted gear is strong and trained, he would be a good addition for Ria's plan. Akeno tried to appeal for Ria's once again, but her intention was read by him, if you want to appeal me about your king, please refrain to do so, I had enough to see what a real side. Issei said in neutral tone. Akeno was surprised that this boy also can read intention, but the way he declined was mostly because Ria's mocked him. But people can change. Akeno muttered. Yes people can change, but I won't change my opinion of her, because she already show what's the real side, she doesn't even see me as her equal, I'm just lowly human after all. Issei said. But she treated us with kindness and affection. Akeno said, trying to change his opinion. Issei sighed, I don't know what kind of favor you owe her, but after being told that I'm a lowly human do you think I will believe that her kindness and affection toward me is real? He asked with flat tone. Akeno was troubled, the boy firm to decline her king because of her own recklessness. Seeing the devil's confusion, Issei decided to ask, I ask you this, if you without your power do you think she will put you into her peerage? He asked. What are you implying? Akeno asked in little angry tone, thinking that Issei tried to mock Ria's. You should know why she wanted my sacred gear so badly right? Issei asked and Akeno replied with nod. Then try to ask yourself if you don't have the vast magic power that belonged to the race you've abandoned, do you think she would put you on her peerage? Issei asked again. 
He felt that her magic prowess is few times stronger than Raynor before he converted her into the dragon. The devil widened her eyes in shock, the young dragon knew that she was a half-fallen angel, the blood she rejected out of hatred to her father, who wasn't able to be at her side when her mother was killed by her own relatives, no one except Rias and her peerage know that she's a former half-fallen. How do you know? She asked, but Issei decided to ignore it. Their king, Rias Grimmery tried to take advantage of the Rainer San who approached me with desire that she would kill me and give Grimmery a chance so she could reincarnate me as her servant, why do you think that she didn't do the same to you or that handsome or that kitten? Issei asked. The Kendo became angry, her savior was mocked, she never felt that she was manipulated to join Rias, she also saved Kaneko when she was almost executed for crime she didn't do, and she saved Yudo from dying. But his word leaves a doubt in her heart. Seeing the confusion, Issei cancelled his barrier and moved toward the door, he need to go home quick as his aunt requested. The Kendo was confused by his action, he just left her like that as if he doesn't hold any interest in anything. But, it was something that piqued her interest in him as it stimulates her trait. If you want to leave, use the back door, Kaneko-chan and Yudokan are waiting at the front door. Akeno warned, rather than warning it was something she did so he won't harm Kaneko and Yudo. Thank you. Issei said before he changed his course toward the back door. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoy this video. Like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification. Don't forget to support and follow Farcast for writing that awesome fanfic and also make sure to comment on this story link in the description. See you in the next video. Goodbye.